The next section we're going to talk about is candlestick patterns. So candlesticks are used to interpret what's going on in your charts. I personally prefer them over line charts, bar charts, and Renko charts because of the ease of recognizing predictable patterns. I don't know many people that actually use any of those other chart uh, candlesticks or other types of chart types. Candlesticks are pretty common. And I would say the general community of traders use candlesticks. So let's quickly just talk about some history on candlesticks. So where did they come from? So candlesticks originated from a Japan rice trader called Munashisa Hama, but was brought to the Western world by Steve Nyson, who wrote the famous book, Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. And I linked to that book in the slide here, just for your information, if you're interested in diving deep into candlestick patterns. And the book is full of a lot of information, but we're going to just talk in this course, what are the most common ones that we use that provide predictable trading setups to profit from. So let's talk about how to read candlesticks. So first, bullish candlesticks can be white or green, and they can also be other candles. Other, they can also be other colors depending on the charting platform that you use, but this is, these are the most two common colors that you'll see. So in order for a candlestick to be bullish, that would mean that the price of the candle, the close is higher than the open, and which would form a green or white candle, also known as a bullish candle. The middle part of the candle is called the body, and that's measured from the open to the close. The part from the height of the close is called the upper shadow, and I also call it the upper wick. And the part that is measured from the open to the low is called the lower shadow, or also known as the lower wick. So for bearish candlesticks, they can be either black or red. For a candlestick to be bearish, the close of the candle must be less than the open. And similar to bullish candlesticks, you have the body, which is measured from the open to the close, and then you have an upper shadow measured from the open to the high, and the lower shadow measured from the low to the close. And now this is an important concept to understand. Candlesticks should always be looked at as a combination of what other candlesticks have formed into. For example, this is the daily chart, and each individual candle represents each day of the week. So you have five days in a week, and at the end of the week, you have a weekly candle, which is more important than what happened on each day. This is why we always look for price levels and places to have high probability day trading setups on the longer term, then map them on to the shorter term, because the longer term will be much more significant than the shorter term. And we can see here that these five, daily candles form this somewhat bearish candle. It depends on if this was formed, if this was formed at a, the top of price action, this is more than likely a bearish candle that we're gonna reverse next week. So it's important to always look at the bigger picture when you're trying to identify high probability day trading setups. So how do we use candlesticks? I'm gonna give you guys a couple tips and you'll be able to see these in action. And you'll also might even come up with your own ways of looking at candlesticks too. But in general, some things to look for are strong trending candles that have little to no upper or lower shadows. And on the right hand side, you can see the green one is bullish, obviously, which is a green candle where open was the same as the low and the close was the same as the high. So pretty much there's just straight up and people are buying it without any pullback. And bearish, would be the red candle where open was the same as the high and the close was the same as the low. So there was no retracement to enter short and the market just took a dump. Another tip is when candlesticks with long shadows and small bodies can confirm price support and rejection at a price level. So the first two candles are considered hammers, which are long lower shadows with the open and close near each other at bottom of a downtrend, which would be bullish. Then you have long upper shadow with the open and close near each other at the top of an uptrend, which would be bearish, which is the second two candles, also known as inverted hammers. Most importantly, volume and overall trend confirm the candlestick pattern. Just because you see a hammer come in does not mean that the price is going to reverse. You have to look at the bigger picture 
to come to a conclusion that this trade is worth taking and there's a high probability that we actually did reverse here because the volume is telling us that we are about we are reversing and also that this candle is aligning with another strong support that I have. So let's talk about some really high probability candlestick patterns that we use at price level trading. The first one is the engulfing pattern. So bullish engulfing would be a two candle reversal pattern where a red slash black candle is, is followed by a large green white candlestick. Now this pattern works best when formed at support and typically appears at the bottom of a downtrend. And the picture below here shows you an example of what you typically would look for in a bullish engulfing pattern. So you'd have a bearish candle that would be red or black, but red in this case where the close was lower than the open. And then the next day or the next candle, we might gap lower and then price would get bought up and we would actually have a bullish candle closing above previous candles open and the length of the bullish candle would engulf the previous red candle as you can see here and then for bearish engulfing it's also a two candle reversal pattern where a green slash white candle is followed by a large red slash black candlestick this pattern works best when formed at a resistance and uh, typically always appears at the top of an uptrend and in the picture below you can see we have a bullish candle which is shown by a candle that closes above its open and then the next candle typically opens above at or above the previous candles close and then sells off to create a candle body that engulfs the previous green candles and the bearish candle closes below the previous candles open so an example of a bullish and bearish engulfing pattern on nq the bullish engulfing would be here it's appearing at the bottom of a downtrend. You can see that the green candle is engulfing the body of the red candle. And shortly after that, we took off and shot up. And this was a really good long opportunity once you recognize that that was a bullish engulfing candle. So how you would actually trade this candle, you'd have an entry. Once that candle closes, it would confirm that candlestick pattern. And we would enter once the next candle opens and we place a stop below the bullish engulfing candle and we would trail our stop appropriately as the trades working in our favor until we see signs of a potential reversal where we would want to exit and take our profit on the other end bearish engulfing pattern is appearing here at the top of an uptrend you can see that the big red candle engulfed the small green candles body and then shortly after we sold off so the entry would be on the retracement on the next candle once, it, once the bullish engulfing pattern has been confirmed when the candle has closed, you'd want to enter around where that green candle is, even closer to the top of that bull, bearish engulfing candle with a stop above for a push that back down to support, which is what we see happened here. Next pattern we're gonna talk about is the piercing pattern. So a bullish piercing pattern occurs at the bottom of a downtrend. The bullish candle opens lower than the close of the bearish candle, but then the bullish candle closes above the 50% level of the previous bearish candle body. Bearish piercing pattern is exactly the opposite and it occurs at the top of an uptrend. The bearish candle opens higher than the close of the bullish candle. Then the bearish candle closes below the 50% level of the bullish candle body. Let's take a look at an example of a bullish and bearish piercing patterns on Disney. So the bullish piercing pattern on Disney, you can see happened here with the, in this chart where there's an oval circling the pattern with an arrow pointing up. You can see that the candle, it opened lower and then closed up higher more than 50% of the previous bearish candle. And then what happened next was we had a gap up and then the next two or three days, we had a significant move up to test the downtrend line. It was a very high probability trade. Same stock, Looking at a bearish piercing pattern, we can see this pattern here is shown circled by this oval with also a, an arrow pointing down. We can see that price opened significantly above the previous bullish candle, but then closed roughly 50% of the bullish candle, confirming the candlestick pattern. And shortly what happened after that, next few days to weeks, price sold off down to support, and it was at solid high probability trade using puts or if you're shorting shares 
Let's talk about now the hammer and shooting star patterns. These two are one of my favorite patterns to use because they have such high re reliability and working that if you only traded this one pattern, you'd do significantly well, I would, in my opinion, as a trader, but you'd have to wait for these patterns to form in order to profit from them correctly. So a bullish hammer occurs at the bottom of a downtrend and hammers typically have a small real body, green or red, in a long lower shadow. As I mentioned, you must wait for the close of the candle for confirmation. This candle can also be inverted as well at support. So you could flip this candle over and it would still be bullish as long as we're at a support level. For a bear shooting star, this occurs at the top of an uptrend. Shooting stars have small real body, green or red, and a long upper shadow. You must also wait for the close of the candle for this confirmation. I also do believe that these candles can be inverted as well. When you see a big hammer at the top of an uptrend, that usually means capitulation, otherwise known as everyone just jumped on board expecting the price to continue up higher and the next day you're probably going to see a sell off. Let's take a look at some examples of hammer and shooting star patterns on NQ. Now this is the daily chart. First up, there's the bullish hammer. Once you see that candle close, it confirms that there's a high chance that NQ is going to make a significant move up to test its previous resistance, potentially continuation to run profits until we see signs of reversing. And then we see a bear shooting star at the top of resistance here. We're consolidating, but we can't seem to go higher. And then we see a bearish shooting star. And there's actually a couple bearish candles here. The previous red candle, or the first red candle that formed was actually a bearish engulfing candle. And then we tried to form a bullish hammer. And then we formed a bearish shooting star. Um, and eventually, there was lack of buyers and we sold off down to support. So it was a very low risk entry to put yourself above the highs there with a, with a move, a nice four, five, six R trade down to support. Doji patterns are also very important to know. And you see them a lot in stocks and price action where there's a lot of indecision. So some characteristics of Doji patterns include they're very thin and they're very thin or have no real body. The shadows can be of any length and they represent, as I mentioned, indecision in the market. It's a battle between the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. So there are four different types of doji patterns that we pay attention to. The first one is the doji star. And this represents indecision with low activity representing early signs of a reversal. So it's a very small upper and lower shadow and the open is pretty much the same as the close. Now a long-legged doji represents indecision with high activity, representing early signs of a reversal. And you typically see this type of candle after a strong directional move. And we'll show you some examples of these candlesticks forming in a second. The next doji is a dragonfly doji, and it typically appears at the bottom of a downtrend, signaling bulls have taken control. Lastly, the gravestone doji appears at the top of an uptrend, signaling bears have taken control. Let's take a look at some bullish and bearish doji patterns on the SPY. This is the S&P 500 ETF. First, we can see some dragonflies here. Dragonflies are forming at support, signifying that we're probably going to push up here, and each time we moved higher. Obviously, the stop would go below the low of the dragonfly candle that formed. Next up, we see doji stars. We have one forming, the first one's forming at resistance, representing a possible reversal here. And shortly after, a couple of days later, we do see a big sell off down the support. And the second doji star candle formed at support after it broke above uh, resistance, now becoming support, signifying that there's a good chance that we might actually continue up here after clearing resistance. Long-legged dojis right here, we're seeing after significant move to the upside and price is stalling out and eventually sells back down to support. The gravestone doji 
is actually right before the doji star so you kind of can use these in combination with each other get a good picture a good story of what market participants are doing the gravestone doji is signifying that more than likely we might have a pullback but we need to see what's confirmed on the next candle to see what happens and then the next candle ended up forming a doji star since we sold back down to support and you can see that that once we broke above previous resistance in this area, we come back down and you'd expect for us to break this level. But since we broke above the resistance and formed a doji star, that was a good indication to buy because we might actually continue to the upside after finally clearing this shooting star pattern right here. Another amazing candlestick pattern that I love to use for swing trading, especially, is the Harami pattern. So a bullish Harami occurs at the bottom of a downtrend, also known as at support, and it consists of a red candle continuing the downtrend. The next candle gaps up, closing green within the body of the preceding red candle. And this is an indication of reversal to the upside. So all the people that were shorting are now trapped after the next day, and everyone's jumping on short at support, price gaps up and holds the next day, putting the people that shorted automatically into a losing position. And the bearish Harami occurs at the top of an uptrend. And that's shown as a green candle continuing the uptrend, the next candle gaps down closing red within the body of the bullish candle. This is an indication of reversal to the downside. So that green candle is formed when everyone's jumping in long at the top of resistance or after a big run up more, more, more than likely. So that green candle is formed from a lot of buyers jumping in, expecting the price to go higher. And then the next day, price gaps down, automatically putting them into a losing position. The psychological effects of that happening are the reason why this candlestick pattern works so well. People want to get out of their position. If you're in, if you see a bullish Harami, the people that are short want to cover, which is going to drive the price higher. In, in a bearish Harami situation, the people that were long want to get out of their position by selling, which is going to drive the price lower. Typically, you'll see a gap the next day after this candlestick forms. Let's take a look at some bullish and bearish Harami patterns on Costco and JP Morgan. So on the left, we have Costco. And I actually personally took this trade and it is a bullish Harami candle. You'll see that you have that first big red candle, which is very bearish. And the very next day we have a gap up and we held within the, inner, the middle of that candle body. So everyone that was shorting, expecting the price to keep going lower are now trapped when the price gapped up and held. So once this candle closed, or like about 15 to 10 minutes before this candle closes, usually by calls for potential gap up and continuation to the upside and the next three days the candlestick pattern played out and went right to resistance around the 314 area and i believe this price costco ended up going to about 320 or so 323 and now looking at jp morgan we see a bearish harami candle here we have a bullish candle that formed trying to push above resistance after a little bit of a sell-off and then the very next day, we have a bearish Harami candle form where the red candle body closed within the green candle body, signifying that we're more than likely running out of buyers and we're more than likely going to sell down to support, which we did the next few days. Next up, morning and evening star patterns. These are also very, very high probability candlestick pattern setups that work most of the time, all the time. So let's first talk about morning star. This occurs at the bottom of a downtrend. And typically this pattern is seen by a first candle is any long bearish candle. And the second candle is a small indecisive candle. It could be like a doji. And the third candle is any long bullish candle. Typically it'll, you'll see a gap up and run the next day. And this is an indication of a reversal to the upside. An evening star pattern occurs at the top of an uptrend and it is shown by a first candle being any long bullish candle the second candle is a small indecisive candle and the third candle is any long bearish candle which indicates a reversal to the downside 
Let's take a look at an example of morning and evening star patterns on the SPY. First, you can see an evening star pattern here where we had a big green candle the day before. We had more or less a shooting star slash indecisive candle to the downside. And then the very next day, this candlestick pattern played out where we had a gap down and sell off back down to support. Now looking at a morning star candlestick pattern on the SPY, you can see that we had a very big red bearish candle. Then the very next day we had a gap down and formed an indecisive candle, more or less a long legged doji. And the very next day we had a morning star cat candlestick pattern confirmation when we gapped up and held the previous open and close of the indecision candle and pushed higher. Now, tweezer bottom and tweezer top patterns are one of my favorite patterns to use when day trading, and they signify very strong support and resistance. So for a tweezer bottom, this occurs at the bottom of a downtrend. To recognize a tweezer bottom candlestick pattern, it is any two candles in a row that have the same low or the same close and open. And this is an indication of reversal to the upside. A tweezer top pattern, on the other hand, occurs at the top of an uptrend. And this is represented by two candles in a row that have the same high or the same close and open. And this is an indication of reversal to the downside. So here are tweezer bottom and top patterns examples on ES, the S&P 500 futures. So I'm on the five minute chart. You can see a tweezer bottom here on the first oval. These candlestick patterns have the same exact low. Shortly after the tweezer bottom pattern formed, price ended up moving up about 10 points. The second oval shows a tweezer top pattern where these candles have the same exact high. And shortly after this candlestick pattern formed, we sold back down to support. So that wraps up some of the candlestick patterns that I use on a daily basis. So let's quickly talk about the final tips on using candlestick patterns. So first let's talk about the body. The length of the body shows you who's in control more. So if you have a long body and you have a green candle, that means the bulls are more in control than the bears. If you have a small body, there's more indecision. If you have the same, a similar size wick on both sides, but if you have a small body and a long wick, that signifies that the bulls are in control, especially if this candlestick pattern formed at a support or bearish if it formed at a resistance. The length of the wick shows you the strength of price, support, and rejection. So the length of the wick will tell you how strong this candlestick pattern is. Lastly, the ratio of the wick to the body. This is even more important than the the last two because small wicks with long bodies signal buyers closing green or sellers closing red are in control. And small wicks with a small body signal indecision. Long wicks with a small body signal a strong reversal. And remember that volume always confirms the candlestick pattern and you must wait for the candlestick to close in order to confirm that pattern and always pay attention, to say it again, to the volume.